All right, today we are talking about measuring with the customary system. <clears throat> so our learning target today is I can use the customary system to measure length, weight, and capacity. Please write down the date that you're watching this video. Write down what you already know about this. So you know what length, weight, and capacity are from back when we learned about the metric system. But we haven't studied the customary system yet, but you could talk about length, weight, and capacity. Then we have one vocabulary word today, and that is the customary system. The customary system is the units of measurement for length, weight, and capacity commonly used in the USA. So at this point, please pause your video, get all that written down, and restart when you're ready to go. So the first thing we're going to talk about is length. The units that we use to measure length are feet, inches, yards, and miles in the customary system. And these are all things that you have probably heard of many, many times in your life. So for example, we're gonna start with our benchmark. Benchmarks are a way for us to have an idea of how long things are, what things, um, how, what the size of that unit is. So for example, an inch, that's about the length of a paper clip. And writing these down helps us when we're solving problems because it helps us give us an idea of, okay, if an inch is about a length of a paperclip, how can we use inches to help us solve this problem? A foot is about the distance from your shoulder to your elbow. One yard is about the width of a door. So if you look at your doorway, the width of that is about a yard. And one mile, one mile is about the distance between the high schools. So if we wanted to talk about what unit you would use to measure things, for example, if we want to talk about what unit would you use to measure a notebook? Well, we can think about this. For a notebook, would we want to use paper clips, arms, doorways, or long distances between buildings? And for me, when I think of a notebook, I know that I want to measure that with inches. So see if you can go in and fill in the rest of these problems here. Um, with what unit you would use to measure those distances, and then restart the video when you have answers. So if I was going to measure the distance to Wisconsin, I would definitely use miles. For a classroom, if I was going to measure the length of a classroom, I would probably use either yards or feet. If I wanted to measure the length of a football stadium, football stadiums are often measured in yards. And if I wanted to measure the distance to New York City, I would once again use miles. And that is length. Our next thing is weight. Our units that we use for weight are pounds, tons, and ounces. And once again, we're going to have benchmarks. So one ounce, that is about the weight of one slice of bread. Think about how light a slice of bread is. That would be an ounce. One pound is about the weight of a soccer ball. And then one ton is approximately the weight of a walrus, which is a very large, large animal. So once again, we're going to think about our what unit we would use to measure various to weigh various things. So, for example, if I wanted to weigh a pencil and I want to think about pencil in terms of slices of bread or soccer balls or walruses, a pencil I would weigh in ounces. 
So pause the video here, go in and fill these through again, and then check your work when you're done. Hopefully at this point you have paused the video and filled the rest of these in. So now I will follow along. So for an elephant, I would probably use tons. Because elephants are even bigger than a walrus. For a textbook, such as a big heavy math book, I would probably use pounds. But for a notebook, which is one pretty light and small, I would most likely use ounces. And then for an airplane, I would probably use tons. The last type of thing that we need to be able to measure is capacity. And if you remember from when we did capacity with the metric system, capacity is the amount a container can hold. To measure capacity, we use the quart, gallon, pint, cup, and fluid ounce. So, one fluid ounce, for example, that is about the same as two tablespoons. So, if you took two tablespoons full of liquid, that would be about one fluid ounce of liquid. One cup. That would be like a small coffee mug. One pint would be like a large coffee mug. One quart would be a large water bottle. And one gallon is those big milk jugs that you see at the grocery store. So again, our question is we want to be able to think about what we would use to measure different things. So a mug of coffee. A mug of coffee, I would probably use cups. Or I might use, if I wanted to be really specific, I might use fluid ounces. So see if you can fill in the rest of these by pausing the video and then restart when you're ready. For milk in a recipe, when you look at a recipe, usually you're going to see that in cups. For the amount of coffee Starbucks sells in a day, in a whole day, how much coffee Starbucks sells, that is definitely going to be in gallons. And if I want to talk about how much juice someone is adding to a thing of punch, I would use quartz. So that's it for today. Please feel free to restart or rewatch or check, recheck anything that you need. Let me know if you have any questions and have a great day.